Hi, my name is Nathan. I'm one of the developers working on the virtual NAS project for the VATSIM network. And today I'm going to demonstrate some new features coming to the CRC controller client, specifically data blocks in the ASDX ground radar mode. I've opened a profile for Boston ground and created a new ASDX display. And we can see we have three aircraft that are currently on the ground. First, JetBlue 51 is squawking his assigned code which is why his flight plan has been correlated with this target. This aircraft is squawking the code 1234. However, it does not match any valid flight plan, so all we see is the beacon code. Finally, this aircraft is not squawking any beacon code. Their transponder is in standby mode, which is why the blue unknown target icon is appearing. Data blocks can be individually toggled by slewing or clicking on the target and again, slewing to toggle back on. Additionally, you can change between the aircraft's ID or call sign and the beacon code by pressing F7 or multi-function B, then slewing on the aircraft. We can see that JetBlue 51 is squawking 3454. Again, we can toggle the aircraft ID back by pressing multi-function B and then slewing on the target. The position of the data block can be changed relative to the target by pressing the corresponding numpad key, for example, 3 for the bottom right, then slewing on the target. You can also change the position of all data blocks relative to their targets by pressing the numpad key and then enter, which will change every data block. Next, I'll demonstrate the ability to change the brightness of both the tracks and the data blocks. Go to the Brightness submenu and click on Track and scroll in a new brightness value. You can see that as I am decreasing the value, the tracks are becoming dimmer, and as I scroll up, they are becoming brighter. I can also type in a value and press Enter to set that value directly. The same can be done for data blocks. Next, the character size of the data blocks can be changed by going to the char size menu, clicking data block, and inputting a new value. When an aircraft is in motion, its velocity vector will be displayed by a line in front of the aircraft. This can be toggled on or off using the vector on or off button, and the length can be increased by using the vector length button and scrolling in a new value. To change the distance between data blocks and targets, click the leader length button and scroll in a new value, or again, type in a new value and press enter. You can also type slash followed by the new length and then enter to change all leader lengths. Data blocks can be toggled on or off using the DB on off button or by pressing the Control F6 shortcut. I'll tell this aircraft to squawk its assigned code, and we can see the target now associates with Delta 713's flight plan. We can also see that the target has changed to an orange aircraft, indicating that the aircraft is either heavy or a Boeing 757. Next, we'll talk about the DB Edit submenu. Inside the DB Edit submenu, we can change what properties are displayed in the data blocks. First, we can toggle between full and partial data blocks. A partial data block will display just the aircraft ID or beacon code if selected, whereas a full data block can display additional information. The aircraft's altitude can be toggled on or off. Altitudes are displayed in tens of feet. The aircraft's type can be toggled on or off. The sensor detecting the aircraft can be toggled on or off. For the case of VATSIM, this will always be Fusion. The aircraft's category can be toggled on or off. Aircraft categories are based on aircraft types as well as flight rules. The aircraft's fix can be toggled on or off. Fixes are defined by facility engineers and will usually match common departure routes. For example, JetBlue 51 is filed on the SOX 6 departure, and so SOX is displayed in his data block as his fix. 
Some facilities might utilize the aircraft's FAA destination ID as a fallback if they do not match any departure procedures. For example, Delta 713 is an arrival and its destination is Boston, so BOS is displayed in the data block. Note that international destinations will not display as they do not have an FAA ID. Back in the data block edit submenu, we can see that velocity can also be toggled on or off. This will display the aircraft's ground speed in knots. And finally, scratch pads can be toggled on or off. Next, we're going to look at the data block area function. Data block areas allow controllers to define areas of the airport where aircraft data blocks should take on certain characteristics. First, we'll look at the define off area function. This allows controllers to define an area where data blocks are toggled off as soon as a target enters the area. I typically like to use this for a ramp area so that when an aircraft squawks its assigned code, it remains just a target icon and does not produce a data block that clutters taxiways. We can begin drawing this polygon by left clicking to place points around the ramp. Note that polygons can only contain up to 20 points. After 20 points are placed, the polygon will automatically complete. To complete a polygon with fewer than 20 points, simply middle click. Once a data block off area is completed, the outline will change to red. Note that no two data block areas can overlap. For example, I cannot start a new area inside of this area, nor can I create an area that will enter that area. Additionally, areas cannot overlap on themselves. To cancel drawing an area, simply press the delete key to exit out of the function. One final restriction to note is that areas cannot encompass other areas. If you attempt to draw an area that will encompass another area, the previous point will be removed. Again, if you want to cancel drawing an area, press delete. If you wish to delete one area, press delete one area and hover over an area. The cursor will change to a bullseye and left click to delete the area. If you are within the delete one area function and no longer wish to delete an area, simply press the backspace key. You can also delete all areas by pressing delete all areas. This will prompt you to enter either one to cancel the operation or two to confirm the operation. Next, we'll look at the define trait area function. This allows you to create an area where all targets within the area have a certain set of data block characteristics. I like to use these around runways to display information that would not be practical to view for aircraft taxiing on taxiways, but it's helpful to view for aircraft on runways. Again, to complete the polygon, simply middle click. Next, you can select the data block traits that should be applied to any aircraft within this area. You can set the data blocks to full or partial mode and toggle altitude, type, sensors, category, fix, velocity, and scratch pads on or off. Set the data block size, the data block brightness, toggle the vector line on or off, change the leader length, and the leader direction. To confirm, press done. If you want to modify a trait area, click on modify trait area and hover over a trait area. Again, your cursor will change to a bullseye. You can left click to open up the same menu and edit any of the settings. When you're within the DB area submenu, data block trait areas will be outlined in green, while data block off areas will be outlined in red. As soon as you close the data block area submenu, the outlines will disappear. However, the areas are still there. Let's go through a brief scenario to see how these data block areas function. We'll assume that this aircraft has just received its clearance and will begin squawking its assigned code. As you can see, the target has now changed to an aircraft icon as opposed to an unknown icon. However, no data block has appeared. This is because this aircraft is within the data block off area. If you wish to view the data block of an aircraft within a data block off area, you can still slew the aircraft target in order to see it. Next, this aircraft will begin taxiing. As you can see, it is still within the data block off area and does not receive a data block until it enters a taxiway. Now that the aircraft has entered a taxiway, the data block edit settings are applied to it. 
Let's now taxi this aircraft out for departure and notice how the data block changes as soon as it enters the data block trait area we defined over the runway. Now that this aircraft has entered a runway, we can see the data block takes on the characteristics defined in the data block trait area. It makes it very obvious that this aircraft is now on a runway. I hope this brief overview has been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the VNAS Discord. I'll post a link in the video description below.